Well guys, I have a new favorite thermal camera. So much so that I've decided to make a standalone video just talking about it. I had been working for about a week and a half on uh, trying to seal up this uh, eye doctor that I help manage the building of. And it's just this heat wave is putting so much heat into the building and the air conditioner started dying too. So it's like one thing is failing as I'm working on stuff. And I dropped my Seek thermal camera, shattering the image sensor. Seek cameras are really fragile. And just two days later, Top Don offered to send me one of their cameras. They sell some little dongles that connect to your phone. But I'm going to be honest, like with my $2,000 Thermap HZ, Thermap has stopped having the app on their store. And the only app versions I can find that you can sideload, well, they, I mean, they miss a lot of features. And then the Seek app, it doesn't have all the features that I recall it having, and now you have to log in. And then if you had an original FLIR 1, forget it. They've removed the features to where you cannot get the old version of the app. Unless you have like a really old phone that can kind of trick the Apple App Store. But I feel like I want to have something kind of akin to like my Jima 470 or my Heat Find IR, where it's all self-contained. It's not calling back to some IP address. It doesn't require some Amazon AWS server or whatever. It just It's all self-contained. So I asked them for their best one, their TC004. There is one called the TC005, which I believe that has a visible light camera as well, but I don't need that. And gosh, I'm so happy with this. This feels like a quality tool. This feels like the durability of some of my Makita or even my mining equipment, like this mining lamp. And I really hope that I'm just tired of these little phone connected teeny tiny little things that it's so easy to drop because they're like this size and then they're dead. Something like this, even when I'm tired, even whenever it's hot or cold, I can still hold it. Well, whenever we first got it, I had to take it around and I was so excited. The, uh, the image clarity is a little bit in between the Seek and the Thermap. That's a $2,000 camera though. So, I mean, I don't really expect that to, I don't expect this to reach that quality just yet, even though that was 2016. I will say one interesting thing is that the Seek thermal camera, back in 2015, the image sensors that we had, the microbolometers, they, they would lose their calibration very quickly. And so it's like every four seconds, the shutter would have to come in and then it would have to recalibrate and then open it. So within, you would only get a few timed windows of good picture quality. And it would go high quality, low quality, and then it has to put the shutter in. You'd lose a few frames. Then you have high quality, low quality. It just looked terrible. This has a very similar process, except whatever image sensor they're using is very high quality. And it this, this goes like two minutes between having to recalibrate. And I don't notice much of a, of a clarity loss. I believe that this mostly just recalibrates whenever you introduce a different temperature range. So for instance, Whenever Thais removed the coffee pot, well, now the hotter heating element was exposed. It put the sh shutter on just to recalibrate and then open it back up because now it wanted to have the, uh, the hot end of the temperature range a little higher. But then after that, it's all fine. So that gets rid of my entire complaint that I had with the Seek thermal camera. This image sensor, all it does is it just, you drop a few frames every every time you you change what kind of scale of temperature measurement you're taking well here's a video clip of whenever we went to weiss and concha hawken with it Look, you can see what, what soda cans were just brought in from the truck. Oh my God. The guy is just bringing them in. You can actually see which soda cans were just brought in. That is so cool. Ah. Yeah. You can see as he's gone down. Yes, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. 
I know a lot of stuff's reflective in it, but oh well. It still works pretty well, even though it has high emissivity. You're not loaded into the game yet, right? No, I just turned it on even, so... Okay, so that's 36C, 37C. It's cool. Now, here's something interesting. I've had a few contractors almost call me a liar that you could detect water with a thermal camera because they don't realize this simple principle. So here's a video clip of me pouring hot water you can see that it's hot. And I've had several contractors now telling me, well, the water is gonna heat up so you won't be able to see it. Ah, but if I take that water and I put it on that towel, look at this, pretty soon it starts evaporating and it gets colder. To drive the point home even more, I put a washcloth underneath it, got it real hot with hot water. And then when I put it on there, here's a sped up version, it, cools down and it becomes cooler. So you can't underestimate the cooling effect of water in a building. So if you have a beam that's, that's cooler, well, it's probably evaporating water. If you have a spot that's cooler, it's probably evaporating water. And it's going to actively lower the temperature until it's done evaporating. So that is how that works. I think it's a real shame that, well, I mean, a lot of builders, they don't even know the theory. They just know what they're told. But it's such a shame that I've had so much pushback on that when it's such a simple principle that I think most contractors need to know that you can use a thermal camera to detect water. It's very well established by this point. I have found one glitch, and I'd say a lacking feature, with the TC-004. So every so often, whenever it puts the shutter in front of the image sensor. I think there's something that's not quite handled right in saving the video file, and so it corrupts the keyframe of the MPEG video or whatever it's called. And then it has a bit of a glitchy effect for a second or two. And sometimes that can carry on for quite a bit. So there must be something where if the shutter aligns with the keyframe of the video file, it doesn't quite handle it too well. And thankfully, it looks like updating this is pretty easy. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask the developers if they can maybe rearrange how they save the video file to make sure it doesn't have that glitchy effect because it looks like it's just losing a keyframe. And then the other feature that I would like to see in this is the option to remove some of the UI elements because I don't need to have the battery meter in the video. I don't really need to have the timestamp of recording, and I don't need to have the emissivity reading on the bottom left, because it's a little bit cluttered. It would actually be nice if, whenever I hit record, if it could actually remove all of the, the UI for any video projects that I'm doing, I could then have just the clean video feed of it. And I think that'd be pretty good. Now, one nice thing about this is you can connect this directly to a computer. And I played around with it for a tiny bit, actually. Here's the startup of it. It's probably running Android. I wouldn't be surprised. And there's pretty much started up. Now, once it's started up, you can turn it off by hitting the power button. And to go through the settings, this button, well, actually, you have a flashlight, too. I thought that was so cool. Also, there's actually a setting that if you have too high of a temperature or too low of a temperature, you can have it flash the light for an alarm. And also, an alarm comes up. Now... You can see what videos and pictures were shot. One nice thing is to take a picture, you just pull the shutter. Now I've gone in and changed the setting to where it doesn't need to be saved, but then hold it down. It starts recording. Tap to stop. 
on video, it asks you, do you want to save it? I'm going to say no. But that's nice because it's, it's good to be able to have the option to not save something. Then you do have digital zoom, which I will never use. <laughs> I'm never going to use digital zoom on this because it's already low enough. I don't actually, I don't even use it on my HD cameras. So what am I talking about? But tapping this, bring up measurement options. You can turn on high, medium, low spot. I had that on in most of the video clips. You can also change. Oh, whoops. ISO theorem. I forgot that's ISO theorem. I think that's, oh, I actually can't recall what that is. I'll have to look it up. Right. There's the palette. So you can have white hot, black hot, iron, which has become the default for the decades. Rainbow, already a red, oh yeah, oh, red gray, that's what it means. But to be honest, iron's good. And then in the settings, you have measure parameter. That's the emissivity and such. Emissivity is how much infrared light does something emit. Something that's black will emit a lot. Something that's silvery won't emit nearly as much. Temperature scale, high, low alert. If we turn this on, then a warning sign will pop up anytime something is over 80 degrees Celsius. Photo settings, I have it set to photo autosave. Image calibration, that is in case you, well, let's say you film some burning magnesium like I did and I messed up my op gal. <laughs> I've messed up a lot of thermal cameras. Unit auto power off. You have quite a good option there of 20 minutes or 120 minutes. I'd probably go with 120 minutes because this battery actually is really capable. And you have city system settings. Device information. I'm running on version V1.2.8.1111. We have 16 gigabytes of available memory. We have a little SIM card, or SD card in there. This thing uses USB-C, by the way. Factory reset for my SD card. Super resolution on. New. Display brightness, date and time, language, and update. So there is actually an update feature. And judging by how other people have reviewed these, they, I guess they update them quite a bit. I love how this camera actually will stand up on its own as well. It's really good. I've had so many cameras that will not stay up on their own. We have TD View as the software for it. Oh, I think I have to disconnect it and reconnect it. Now, I don't know if it's possible to undo the UI elements. So again, I'm gonna ask them if they can release a version that doesn't have the UI elements always stuck on, but they have like 3D view. Look at that. So if you need to have everything turn into a height map, you can actually do that. I'm just gonna rotate it. It's kind of funny. Yep. That's the ribbon cable PCIe extender. So this is pretty cool. Oh, interesting. So it shows the vector of temperature across that line. Yeah, that seems pretty useful. I may want to use it Oh, we have a temperature curve. I might want to use it whenever I'm doing more scientific stuff, when I'm experimenting with engineering. Add curve. Okay. Oh, look at that. Ow. Oh. So you can actually have like a graph. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, 
I like this. This is my new favorite camera. And I like that it's a just a regular .exe. You can just keep it for decades, run it on anything. This is making me pretty happy. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this quick little look of this thermal camera. I was just going to have it in the video of troubleshooting the air conditioning and heat inflow at the uh, doctor's office I was hoping at. But, you know, I think this is deserving of a quick little video just about itself because this is, this is a good camera. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.